Hello and welcome to IGN Anime Club episode 36 and the first of 2016. Yay anime! Yay, Yay anime! anime! <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm your host, Callie Blakey, filling in for Miranda Sanchez, and joining me is the immensely talented Megan Sullivan. My name oh, no. is Megan <laughs> Sullivan. So, they've been doing this before we started recording because they're wrestling fans. We're wrestling which fans. Brings wrestling me, fans. Which brings me to our next guest, a returning guest, yes. the uh, indomitable review man, <laughs> Vince and Janino. Indomitable. That's probably the first time I've ever been called indomitable. I Thank couldn't, you. I couldn't Thank you. think of another word. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. It was the first word that came to my mind. Um... <laughs> Yeah, so thank you for joining us again. Yeah, anime. On yeah, anime. Yeah, anime. <laughs> anime club. Um, welcome back. So, I'm glad you're here today because, that, well, for mul- multiple reasons, but there is some Voltron news, <laughs> some puzzling Voltron news for a youngster like me who doesn't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, do you want to go ahead, Megan, sure. and explain so this what is, is going on? Breaking news. Voltron, DreamWorks Animation, and Netflix are partnering partnering to bring several new original series to the popular streaming service, including an animated Voltron, which blows my mind because that show started in 1984 and mm-hmm. ended like in 1985. I was a I was a wee I was a wee six year old. <laughs> I was a wee little lad. But you were a big. Voltron fan. I was a big Voltron fan. I had I had several of the toys. Okay, now to say I had several of the toys is totally lying. I wanted to have several of the toys. I had one. I had the Black Lion. This was back when they were made out of die cast metal. You know, this was the heavy duty stuff. Right. Um, and I always sounds dangerous. I know. It was totally. <laughs> were you, how did you guys live through the eighties? I have no idea. When I look at it, I have no idea. Literally, <laughs> literally, the Black Lion was like three pounds of metal. Yeah. And I was six, just like, yay, hopefully I don't drop this on my head. They you know? still had, like, fire-starting kits and stuff oh, yeah. like that. It was, yeah, it was totally. dangerous times. Um, oh, my goodness. But I, I always, the, the next lion I wanted, and I never got it, was the yellow lion. And this is, like, my first uh, lesson in economics was, like, I saw the yellow lion was $4 at a, a store. And I scrounged all through my room to find four dollars. What I was really looking for was four quarters, and I didn't realize that. I was like, I had found three quarters. I'm like, oh, oh god, I'm almost, I'm almost there. I can I can totally get the yellow lion. And then I found the fourth quarter. And I was like, yes. And then I went I went to my dad. I'm like, dad, if I have four dollars, will you pay the tax and can I get the the yellow lion? He was like, sure. And I was like. If you're not watching the video, he just gestured and it was adorable. It was amazing. And yeah, and then uh, yeah, I never got the yellow line. Oh, <laughs> never. Well, didn't. now I know. I, I know what to get you for a present. I was about to say, now we're going to pitch in and get you probably one off We're going to get you the whole actual like Voltron. like $80 probably. <laughs> what was that? It was like yeah. five lines or something? Like, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's so the okay. the two legs, the two, okay. the two arms, so and then for, the body. For someone like me who doesn't know anything about Voltron, it's like mech, mech-y stuff. And Garage Band is being weird. Don't know what <laughs> it just, happened it, there. It beeped like it was it, like you swore. It's it, like beep. I know. Yeah. You, you said that. You said a dirty word. You said Callie. a B word. I don't Voltron. know. I don't know if anyone. You will said even, mech. I said mech. Yeah. Uh, I didn't do it. <laughs> um, yeah. So if, if you, you probably won't hear that on the recording, but yeah, our computer just beeped at us. Um, so, so yeah. So, so it's like support. it's a mech sort of. Show. Yes, I don't. I don't know much about no, it's, it. No, it's cool. So it's it's um yeah it's it's five it's basically five mechs that are all lions um and then the, the, there's uh, green red uh, yellow uh, black and blue mm. and uh, basically they're a team they all they're these these robotic lions and they all pilot them and then when stuff gets really bad they they all form you know one giant um, robot called Voltron all with right. a big huge sword and through the power of Netflix and Guillermo del Toro this is there will be more no, actually, is Gil- that what, the, is the Guillermo del Toro thing I think is separate I think this is Troll, Troll Hunters, Hunters right? yeah yeah, oh. I think that's a different that's, thing. That's a separate thing. That makes I was super so when I saw this news, I just saw Guillermo del Toro and Voltron in the same thing and I, my <laughs> mind was blown. <laughs> so if if you like me were confused those are two separate things. They're they're two separate things. Um, but that's good to know. So it's so Netflix is bringing it back. Netflix kind of revives things that we love. Yeah. Um, like all, TV. All yeah. Hail, like all, all, the, all the TV. <laughs> all hail the power of Netflix. I mean, I like Netflix for for anime as well. Um, it brings. Yeah. brings I like them shows. for their comic book stuff. Like I'm not. I'm I'm gonna lay this out there. Don't hate me, but I'm 
not a huge comic book fan outside sure. of Batman. I'm just not very knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. And so, but I've been watching like Daredevil. It was like my favorite show from last year. Yeah, it was great. Jessica Jones is really good. So the fact that this is Voltron on Netflix. I Now, here's a question, though. Do you think this will be cell shaded or do you think this will be CGI? Um, so in my heart, I want it to be just animated, you know, right. um, because, you know, cell shaded, because honestly, when you do CGI, when you do CGI stuff, you know, especially independently, that, that's not like part of a big movie studio or something like that. It's almost invariably, no matter how, wherever technology is at that time the the production level is like somewhere like half a step or two steps below it mm -hmm. and you always notice doesn't matter how good it is you always notice and it, for me it takes away from the experience um, but that said Netflix has proven again and again that they can put on just about if not Hollywood level production values at least like high caliber television production values so if they have that kind of backing and they have that kind of power and they can leverage that same level of production value for a Voltron show a CGI show might actually look really cool. I'm just in general excited that Netflix is trying their hand at creating an animated original. If, unless I've missed unless I missed something, it's their um, first animated original. No, I mean they've they've done things that you would people have called anime, but of course I I don't want to be a stickl stickler for that, but it can't be called anime unless it was made in Japan. But like I think uh is it Seven Deadly Sins? Is that one that's a Netflix original or did I just make that up? Uh <laughs> I actually don't know it. Uh and Knights of Sidonia as well. Um I believe. Oh, so they have done animated stuff. Yeah, before. they've done. I wasn't aware of that. Stuff, okay, cool. Animated uh, original stuff. Um, correct me if I'm wrong about uh, Seven Deadly Sins, but I thought that's what it was. Interesting. Um, but Knights of Sidonia for sure. Um, yeah, so they've done that before, which means cool. they have a track record. So uh, I think you know it's safe to be a little hopeful about this if you're a Voltron fan. Sure. Well, now I want to look those up and see how good they were. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So if you're excited about Voltron, uh, let us know. Let us know what you think. Let us know if you think it'll be cell shaded or CGI. Yes. And how can they do that? Where can they go? Oh, that's a good idea, Megan. Hey. You can tweet at us uh, using the hashtag IGNIME, IGNMA. It's silly, we know, but it's cute. And you can also email us at um, IGN underscore anime club at IGN.com. And give a shout out to our awesome, 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 awesome Facebook group. <laughs> <laughs> our awesome Facebook group. You can also join at Facebook.com slash groups slash IGN anime club. So moving right along to... What we've been watching, because we've been off on a break. Um, we had some episodes go up while we were gone, but we had some time to watch some stuff um, a little bit. I also watched, like, Ash vs. Evil Dead, so it's not <laughs> anime. Um, I, I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's got its, it's, it's, got got its, its anime campy, campiness. Yeah. Um, but I finally started One Punch Man. Yes. And, uh, so I had watched the first episode, and I wasn't into it, and I think I was just in a bad mood when I watched it, because I was like, eh, I don't get it. And then... And then I watched it again with my cousin and my little brother, and we were like, yeah, one punch. <laughs> so I went home, and I watched a bunch more, and my brother finished it already, and he, like, doesn't watch a lot of anime at all. So it was like, okay, A plus, One Punch Man, get my brother into anime. And yeah. I love it so much, and, and Genos is my phone background. Uh, <laughs> He is he is husbando material. He's <laughs> a plus, a plus, S class husbando. Well. Um, oh, and then yeah. uh, so that was definitely the highlight for what I watched over the break. And then I also watched more Beautiful Bones, Sakurako's Investigation. However, I like the title "A Corpse Is Buried Under Sakurako's Feet" way better. I wish it was still titled that. <laughs> Remember when it was titled that a while back? That's what I that's, like. That's, that's sounds what you hardcore. Like. But um, yeah, that one kind of lost me a little bit it tapered it, off it's uh i know you watched it too megan so i want to yeah. segue to you with this um but yeah i thought it was getting a little monster of the week li not literally mm. monsters of course but that kind of trope yep. where yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. new thing of the week right. we wrap it up in 22 minutes Bye. yep nice little procedural nonsense i mean it's like it, it, I, I like that sometimes it can be fun i was hoping for because the the um opening theme like the opening of the oh, anime. I love the opening thing I really love that opening and again I want to emphasize how beautiful the show is it's the animation it's gorgeous. gorgeous but um it hints at this like overarching like her little brother thing that I didn't get answers with to the episode I got to like nine or ten or something and I was like waiting for this big mystery of why she's so disturbed about Shotaro and she calls him shonen because her he reminds her of her brother or something I've gathered this much from the show 
that's just from the opening. Yeah, and I I finished it, and you don't really get so it kind of ends on a cliffhanger. Oh, spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. No, oh, sorry. I'm <laughs> don't give me a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that because I don't want to be that person. Yeah, no. I've had it happen to me. And yeah, just avoid avoid spoiling. Somebody too much, spoiled but. the big Star Wars thing, by the way, on Twitter for me. Thanks, you're super swell. Ugh. But um, anyways, Wars. but it's not a it's it's not a spoiler that the show just kind of ends with a dull thud it mm-hmm. kind of ends on a cliffhanger i don't know if there's going to be a second season it brings up more questions at the end than it has answers and it just it kind of tapered off i mean mm-hmm. i finished it but reminds me of like the perfect insider also finished and it also oh, yes. tapered off and i don't they were they were okay it was a murder mystery but their reasoning towards the end was a little like hmm hmm i don't know i don't know if i buy that mm-hmm. it's not like supernatural or anything, but there's certain things where I was like, eh, I, I, I don't know. But I enjoyed the animation in that show as well. The music, the mm-hmm. the idea is very intellectual. I, I like those thinker type animes. So I appreciated the effort with Sakura. Right. Go and Beautiful Bones and all that. But eh, I don't know, dude. It just, yeah. They're good. They weren't great. They were meh. Mm. But I, I did watch um, Tokyo Ghoul. Mm. Can finally, it's been yeah. around forever, and I could never get around to watching it. It's like it's one of those things where it's so popular. It's like, oh, I'll watch it tomorrow. Oh, I'll watch it tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'll watch it tomorrow. And finally, I had time over the break. It's like maybe I should watch it today. Mm-hmm. It's intense. Yeah, it's really grim. Yeah, and I was really surprised by how like, it gets really like dark and violent. And uh, sounds like sounds like whew. my kind of anime. It's it it's like it's very anime. it's. Uh, the interesting thing, I'm only in like two or three episodes right now, but the one thing I like about the main character is it's not like he becomes a ghoul and he has all sorts of wacky adventures. Right. Like <laughs> it's him struggling to mm-hmm. like hang on to his humanity is a right. big part of it. And I appreciate it. I don't know if it's my cup of tea necessarily. I'm not huge in that kind of that much gore, mm-hmm. but I can see why it appeals to some people. Mm-hmm. It's just it's just very unique. Right. Cool. Yeah. Well, you had a very productive Productive yeah, it seems like you're, far as you're anime watching watch a lot. Yeah. Well, no, actually, t- towards the end, I finally did. I had a very stressful, busy right. break, but I finally made some time because I was like, I want to watch anime. <laughs> See, <laughs> it's awesome. I am. You reminded me just talking about how you putting off Tokyo Ghoul. I am so like that. I procrastinate things I want to do. I'm like, I want to play this game, but I could play another match of Black Ops Three. <laughs> <laughs> Because I know how to do that, <laughs> right? Uh, it's like the prospect of like learning new characters or like learning a new world sometimes is overwhelming to me. Yes. So I'm like, eh, I'll watch it tomorrow. I'm gonna rewatch freaking Kill a Kill or something, <laughs> right? So, uh, re- re- wiring new new like neuron connections it takes <laughs> energy. It takes energy. Sometimes exercising ones that exist already is just what you need. That's yeah. your life <laughs> work. Yeah, yeah. Like you're you're watching anime and you're like I can't keep up with the subs I'm so tired. Like, <laughs> right. Um, no, I, so. that's what I do with Tokyo Ghoul. The last episode I was so tired and I was like I was watching and sub and then I switched to dub, which is actually really good. Mm-hmm. So I could just sort of listen and drift in and out because I was like I can't concentrate right now. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it was good. Also, really fast. Sorry, tangent. Oh, it's all right. Watched the dub of Snow White with the red hair. Finally came out on Funimation. Mm-hmm. Really good. I I didn't really like the show in subbed, yeah. but I might watch more of it in dubbed. So keep that, that in the back of your mind. That Interesting. Is, I'm really glad you brought that up because I kind of wanted to revisit the show. It's getting a second, either a second season or a second cur. And I have a friend who's a super big fan, and um, I the we had discussed this way back when when the show first aired. Like the first episode, we're kind of like that was a contained story. Yeah. What? Um, but this is the kind of show I would watch on a slow day while I'm doing something else in the dubbed form. I can't watch it yeah. subbed while I'm doing something else. Right. That's not possible. Um, so I might look into that as my kind of like chill while I'm working on something kind of low Netflix key. and chill. Yeah. Funimation and <laughs> chill. <laughs> <laughs> um, so cool, and I always trust trust Megan on her dub recommendations. I'm she very knows picky, a lot. and she studies the voice acting. I do. I study the the voice acting. <laughs> Speaking of actors, oh god, yes, great wow. Megway. Actually, it was Callie. It was a play Plague Way. Way. Plague Plague Way. Way. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I say that because Vince is an actor. Oh, I was. Of sorts, I was theater, an actor in a the long, theater a long time but, ago. Um, theater actor. Yeah, you you did some watching yourself. I did not 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 much because I had a lot of uh, you know the, 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 I mean Nuclear Throne and 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 Don't Starve aren't gonna play themselves so you know I have Fair. to I had to I had to I had to do some of that but yeah I did I did watch a little bit and it's a show 
This is funny. I do this. I don't just do this with anime. I actually do this with, with a lot of games, uh, in fact, too, is that like – so Psychopaths is an old show at this point, but it's a show that I've – I've never made it past the fourth episode. And it's not because I don't like it or because I get bored. It's because I don't know how or why, but every time I get to the fourth episode, something's happening in my life or something takes my attention away. Right. It falls to the back burner and then it sits there for long enough where I'm like, you know what? I was only four episodes in. Let me just rewatch it from the beginning again. Mm. Um, and, uh, and and then I'll be fine. And then, you know, so, and, and here we are. Like, I've been, that's been happening for three, like, Three years now. Oh man! So you are an expert on the first four episodes. <laughs> of Psychopaths. Yeah, no, you, you, that's, that's fair to say. I'm an expert on the first four episodes of of Psychopaths. But what I really love Psychopaths is got it's got the exactly the kind of vibe. Uh, it's got a weight and a heft to it that um, kind of an oppressive uh, dystopia that I just I feed off of that. I love that. It's mm -hmm. my it's just my jam. It's my wavelength. Um, but uh, I've always found. I found the way they they use the the main character kind of uh, the first time I watched it I found it a little bit off putting because it was a little bit difficult for me to swallow the idea that someone who was so at the top of their class and was chosen for the you know to to be able to do this job would uh, have such like a fundamental problem with with violence mm -hmm. you know like that's it seems like a strange field of work right to go into if you if you absolutely cannot bear the idea of pulling a gun on somebody uh, so I remember thinking that was like an odd. I guess I felt like they made her seem weaker than she realistically should have been, like more vulnerable and weaker than she like – like she didn't need to be that. Like, you know, I, I feel like she could have had a heart and still not like been incapable of doing her job. Like I, right. I, I feel like you can have a heart and be capable of doing hard things and like that would have been more interesting. And it felt a little bit tropey and kind of like a cop-out to me. Mm -hmm. And I think that was like what derailed me the first time I watched it. Okay. I, I just couldn't get over that feeling that they were like selling this main character a little bit short because she was a woman. And I was like, I just didn't – Kind of it didn't, like that. I didn't, you didn't like yeah, it. Yeah, I didn't dig that. I got – eventually I came to have a different perspective on it. And I was like, well, actually it's just showing how strong people can also kind of uh, show vulnerability. And like – and that's and that's good too, you know. So uh, it's funny how when you come at it from different points in your life, you have kind of a different perspective. But yeah. so hopefully this time I will make it uh, – I will make it through because I love the vibe and I love the themes. Mm -hmm. um, I just have never – it's always time. As a, as a great As a great man, as the great Greg Miller once said to me, time – she gets away from me. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, fair. Yeah. Uh, Psychopaths is always one people are like, oh, you know, I've watched Death Note. I liked it. Love I'm like, Death Note. And they're like, what should I watch next? I, I always kind of go, hey, maybe you'll try Psychopaths. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I don't know where you stand on that. Would you? No, I totally agree with that. And actually, it's in a similar boat with uh, Psychopaths as mm -hmm. that I, anime that I've loved and never finished. I'm about maybe – halfway through death note mm -hmm. i think and i haven't picked it back up oh. um and i keep meaning to well, like, the halfway point of death note is kind of where some people are like all right that's what i've heard and that's <laughs> why and that's why <laughs> i've Might never be a good place to stop yeah. right that's why i've never made the time to kind of go forward i don't want to like spoil anything like but whatever but that's why i've never made the time to go forward because i keep hearing that uh, I, exactly that that like maybe that's like the just like with uh, Bleach I never went past the Soul Society arc I just watched the Soul Society arc and then I was like well I think I think I've seen the best of this show according to everything that I hear so right. I'm kind of like I yeah, mean I'll when you have when you have a lot of media to consume especially in the kind of job that we're in we have yeah. a lot of, we have to do a breadth of things sure so you kind of have to uh, prioritize your time like that but I Death Note um, I actually haven't watched the anime I, I read the manga um, because I want I have the fancy like the pages are black. Yeah, it's yeah. Like super nice. So um, I read the manga, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, reading the manga can go faster than watching the anime, though. Uh, so if you're not super sure that you'll like the second arc of Death Note, maybe try. Manga. Yeah, or if you're like me, you can do the super fast version and just watch the action movie. Which was that. which was playing on like TV Japan or something one day, and I was like, "Is this Death Note? I didn't know they made an actual. I didn't know movie. that either. Yeah, with <laughs> like movie like CGI and huh. yeah, I would one hundred percent put the full amount of time into at least the f first arc if you haven't seen Death Note, yeah, because um, that's a good show. Yeah, really good. Um, I think that brings us to our topic of the day because. I kind of did this with Death Note, read it all in one day. Our topic, oh wow. our topic Animal. is <laughs> uh, binge watching, watching a lot of anime in one sitting. Yes. Just consuming so much of the show. Um, yeah, so I kind of wanted to do this because we just had a break. Um, people kind of get that 
wintry flu cold thing going on you might be home from work or you might still be on break from work or school yep and that means you have time to be an umaru <laughs> and sit at home and watch 14 <laughs> hours of anime <laughs> while chugging soda and eating chips yep. and mm-hmm. chocolate mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. all that good stuff yeah. and playing your psp or vita right. at the same yeah, time while you're watching left leftover holiday cookies yes yeah. all yep. all of the things yep. so um, in the spirit of that, I wanted to know what is the best show for binge watching, in your opinion? What is the show that you just kind of like, just like are like, like the one we love the most, or the best that we recommend for people? Both. Let's go with both. both. Okay. Cool. Start with the what would you recommend for people to try binge watching? Uh, well, I think something easy and digestible, like Fully Cooly. It's six episodes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is an excellent. I, that's <laughs> such a good right I, there. I, I don't know why I never thought of that because it's <laughs> I didn't like think of that either. yeah, because I, I guess I don't think of it as a binge. It's too short to be a binge right. in my head almost. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you're right. But it's a good way to start. Just sure. little little bites. It's a mini binge. It's a, it's a little mini binge. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Yeah. But anything that's you know twelve episodes or whatever. The, the one I did binge that was twenty six episodes, but was totally worth it was Michiko and Hachin. Mm-hmm. I love everything about that show. I love the music, the animation, the characters, the voice acting, the story, the camaraderie with people. It's really adult. It's really awesome. Great action. I'm going to shut up now because I'm gushing. (laughs) But that's the first show in a long time that I actually binge watch because I couldn't stop. It Mm -hmm. was so good. But it was 26 episodes, so it took me about a week to get through it. If you're gonna binge watch, I I would I would go with something between six to twelve episodes. That's a little more because twelve episodes would be what six hours. If yeah, they're about, if they're half about yeah, a half hour each, about, less because yeah. they're probably twenty two with commercial breaks. Right. And yeah, stuff. math. <laughs> so yeah, I'm trying to think what else. Excellent. Yeah. Um, going off of Fully Cooly, I found I guess this only sort of counts because this will be a half hour of your time probably, but like something like a tech you or oh, a, yeah. an I can't understand what my husband is saying or, um, you know, we did this with Waka Kozaki. Well, I watched it week by week, but it's easy to do with Waka I, Kozaki. I, I, that is something I binge. Um, I watched Waka Kozaki like the first seven episodes and like... Yeah, I just read all this down now. Um, Less than 20 minutes. <laughs> uh, but yeah, those are really good for, these are the, you know, shorts that are two to four or five minute episodes where you can just kind of sit down and it actually, for for the example of I can't understand what my husband is saying, I needed to watch that all in one sitting because otherwise I lost track of what was going on. And right. that show can be really touching and really funny and goofy. And I really enjoyed that one. Take You is also one where you kind of have to be in a certain mood for because it's super off the wall comedy yeah you have no um, idea what's going on half the time it's like i know this is sort of about tennis but it's really about zany cutaways and weird yeah. fast tat, 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 like really super fire rapid fire jokes right. right so that's one where you know you you've been goofing off with your friends for a while watching vines or whatever the kids do <laughs> you're, wa- you're watching your trash on youtube you're watching, you're watching some garbage garbage and then you're like you know what i need some anime garbage, and I mean that lovingly. <laughs> and then you sit down and you watch like 20 episodes of Take You. Um, <laughs> no, it's, recommend. it's interesting that you mentioned also that you felt like you needed to binge. Uh, I can't understand what my husband is saying because I was going to say, like, I, now I don't know if it's a great show to binge. It's actually not because it's hilariously long and you'll maybe die. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but so a show that I binged uh not all of but like I did a big binge watch of was actually Naruto. Um wow. because uh <laughs> so this is why as you as you know, Cal, you 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 mentioned at the, at the beginning that I'm that I'm that I am, you know, I'm I do lots of the reviews things. But before I did a lots of the reviews things uh here full time, I did some of the reviews things as a freelancer as you used to do as well. We both came up through, the, through as freelancers uh for Jim. Cheers. Uh, <laughs> so, um, but as you know, uh, it was my job to handle a lot of the anime games that a lot of the staff members just weren't familiar enough with to play. <laughs> and then after that, it went to And then me. after that, I passed <laughs> the mantles away. I passed the mantles directly to you as soon as I was hired. Um, and one of them was like, they were like, hey, you know, like, you know, fighting games, can you, can you, like, can you review this Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm game? And I was just like, I can't, except I don't know anything about Naruto. So for research, I wanted to get a sense of Naruto. And I, so I was like, you know what? Let me just start watching it. And I realized that, like, because it's, A, it's, like, 22-minute episodes, and, B, it's this, it's very serialized. So it's, like, very much it, one episode leads kind of to, you know, is to the next. It, not directly, but, like, it is almost all part of an overarching story. 
uh, except for like the filler episodes, obviously, <laughs> which there's plenty of in that show. <laughs> but it's funny because I actually felt like between the filler and the kind of the pacing of those like of those shonen shows, I almost felt like watching one episode or even five episodes was like not substantial enough for me to feel like I saw something happen. Yes. So I was like, I actually felt like I needed to watch no less than like 10 or 8 to 10 episodes at a time. Exactly. Just to feel like I actually watched a thing. Thank you. <laughs> I, the, so the first thing I ever saw of Naruto was my friend was like, you gotta understand my love for Lee, Rock Lee. Yeah, right. And I was like, okay. So she's like, okay, we're gonna watch this Lee gotta fight. I fell in love with Gara. I'm all about oh, that. Oh, Gara is. I'm all about mm-hmm. troubled little troubled boys. Oh real yeah, he's a, boys. he's a he's a he's a little he's a hot little Sith boy like you like. I love Sith boys as well. I I tweeted about how. <laughs> I just I like I like the tr- I I'm like what's your problem? I like, you're like you're like a closet edge lord lover. <laughs> fix yourself. So I fix, fix yourself. yourself. So Be normal. normal. <laughs> I said that to them before the episode. <laughs> This is why they're laughing so hard. Uh, <laughs> I, I, uh, warned, I was like, I love everyone, this episode be so normal. Much. Um, <laughs> that did not happen, by the way. No. We immediately went off the, it's not, went off the that's rails. That's not what anime clubs are about. Uh, no. Uh, but yeah, so that that fight is like three episodes. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. And so you have to watch in order to get uh, the full like mini arc of whatever right. this fight is yeah. or whatever the training is. Mm-hmm. You do have to watch like six at once. Uh, so that's one almost where... It's a recommendation to <laughs> right. watch it, but more a requirement. Yeah. It's like if you're going to watch the show, like do not be like, yeah, I'll watch one episode a night or like one episode a week. Nope. No, you won't. <laughs> no, you won't. No, you won't. You um, won't get literally anything out of it. <laughs> my my big suggestion that I wrote down before uh, for binging is Attack on Titan because oh, yeah. I think you can ride the no, hype. No, no, oh. no, no. It will rip your heart out. I tried. I couldn't do it. I was so emotionally good. wrecked. I loved the, the pain. first episode. Whoa. Traumatized me. I know. I was like, I, the, I watched the first episode and I was like, Oh, Next. I watched. I watched that. <laughs> I, 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 I couldn't. I, watched, I couldn't. His mom. Oh my god. I watched the first episode and I was like, yeah. Like I was like, yeah, it does. Tragedy. Yeah. I, I knew nothing about the story going in. I this is a true story and I'm embarrassed to tell it, but it's funny. I thought because I knew nothing about this show when I went into it, I thought it was about like planetary wars like a, like a space I, odyssey I told, until i until i w- paid any attention to what it was i thought the same thing yeah and so i thought it's so i see yep. this medieval wall this castle i'm like oh my god i love history this is going to be so great oh, you by the end of the first baby. episode it's like oh yep. my god oh. and i can't even, i can't even get to the crucible episode which is like episode four right everyone's so, like oh that will make or break you that will make or break um, you. No, couldn't wow. stop. Couldn't stop Attack on Titan. Once I oh. once, once I started, I couldn't absolutely couldn't stop. Yeah. See, I have mixed feelings about Attack on Titan. I kind of don't like the second cur as much, but I would say because I binged the first half and then I caught up uh, when it was airing. Yeah, um, which is coincidentally what I did with Food Wars as well. Um, when those shows you just can't. Well, not put down because you're not holding anything unless you're holding your <laughs> iPad. <laughs> but it shows you just like you can't turn off. Um, Attack on Titan, just like I was so hype about that show. Mm. I was like, yeah, and I just rode the hype through the first 10 episodes or whatever. Right. Um, so that's one. I mean, a lot of people have seen that, but if you haven't and you have some time, it's a, it's one that's worth watching, I think. Um, and then I did. I mentioned Food Wars as well. I did that. I watched, I think, 14 episodes in a day um, oh. because I was catching up. You I know what I sort of binge watch on because I fell behind was my love story. Oh, I don't know yeah. if it's binge material, but you mentioned Food Wars. And I was like, what mm-hmm. was I watching that I was, I was binging? It was like, my love story because I like happy, warm, fuzzy feels. Yeah, that's a binge if you're, like, sad. Yeah, yeah. that's a good uh, one if you're you're super down no, and you want something to pick you up. No, totally. And like, one weekend, uh, uh, my girlfriend and I were, were kind of, like, feeling, like, mopey and in need of, like, comfort anime. And yeah. uh, I had never seen it, and it was, like, a, a show that she loved. So we... We watched all uh, all of like Fruits Basket over a weekend. Oh, and, uh, and that, Fruits, that was that was that was basket. definitely like a my my heart needed a nice big warm hug like that. That was, was great. I love yeah, I love Fruits that, Basket. I I binged that manga, so yeah, I would agree with that one. 
Um, but yeah, let us know what shows you have binged and what you think would be worthy of a really long marathon. Um, you can, again, tweet at us using hashtag IGNIME to be part of the conversation. Or if you have Facebook, you can go to facebook.com slash groups slash IGNIME club. It's a fantastic community with lots of people contributing and talking. So if you haven't joined, I would recommend going in there, talk about anime, yes. make some friends. Um, and finally, you can email us at IGN underscore anime club at IGN dot Yes. And if you want to show your love and appreciation for IGN <laughs> Anime Club while you're walking around conventions, guess what? We have t-shirts in every color, including our new color black, which was highly requested by our fans. I forget where they're supposed to go to get go the gloves. <laughs> to go.ign.com slash store for the shirts. Callie's all over it. Nailed it. Like Nailed it. Links. Moving along. Um, I think just going a little more general, what we we'll kind of touched on this, but what makes a show worthy of sitting down and marathoning because sometimes i get kind of brain like mind numbed i can't do it um and what shows or genres are impossible to marathon (laughs) and i think i i should just nominate myself to start that because i have an example i binged modica which was a bad idea (laughs) that show it's only 12 episodes plus the movies um but that show like ripped my heart out and made me eat it. Like, it was yeah, so, yeah, it was so suck it down. Yeah, it was so <laughs> it. bad. Whoa, oh, so bad. Lude. Um, so in order to console myself after binging Taste Monica, Magic, <laughs> Taste the misery, Taste, Taste the, the black despair, rainbow, despair. Yeah. Uh, my roommate at the time brought up some dumb meme video about the Maduka Magukas. <laughs> And we watched like a 10 minute 4chan live dramatic reading <laughs> in order about it. It was like, hey, me, Ryu, no. And it was like, Kyubu or whatever. It was so stupid. And that was the only thing that got me out of that like pit of darkness. <laughs> so um, if I, <laughs> that sounds really harsh. I do love that show a lot. But uh, I would not. Recommend. You have to have a, an emotional fortitude, I, I think is what you're saying. I am too weak. <laughs> Emotionally, I was just like, Whoa. um, cried so much. So, yeah, I guess the that was a roundabout way of answering sad shows. Don't do that to yourself. Yeah, don't or, binge the sadness. Or do I mean like I love I love maybe <laughs> I'm maybe I'm nuts. I don't know. I I I love to. I just love I love anything any piece of entertainment art that puts me that can make me go to that place is. You know, is a is a plus material to me. Like that is, yeah. I, I don't know why, but I will absolutely pay for someone to make me feel that way. For a for a piece of entertainment <laughs> to make me feel that way. Like pay you I wanna, to make me cry. I want to explore things. I want to I want to go to those hard places in like my heart in a safe place in a safe way. You know, like that. You're like, like a, a little bit of like a like a dominatrix sort of masochist thing. Maybe you're just you like, know? like like it's a safe place, but I can. It allows me to feel those things. Yeah, I, I can like feel it. those things, and I can learn maybe maybe learn some things about myself. Touch you know like little parts of my heart and soul that I haven't you know like I think that's great um like that's why that's the kind of um uh, unflapping uh masochism that led me to uh to binge technolize it a weekend and then I pretty much why did you do this <laughs> because I hated life <laughs> and didn't want to be here anymore no I'm not really but I mean like I was no that was uh yeah <laughs> explain explain to people what that is first yeah. of all so they know back up a little bit technolize is um it's hard to explain. It's very dark. It's very noir. It's also kind of about like, it's a little bit body body horror ish in the sense that it's about like, uh, someone like losing lots of limbs and having to like, oh. uh, like what happens to their humanity. And like I don't want to spoil too much of it, but like the, it, it is very very dark, uh, dark stuff. And it also it's one of those things that you can't. It's very subtle in the way it expresses a lot of things, so it's not something that you can watch haphazardly or kind of in a relaxed state. Like that's what I was gonna say. Like, I think for me, what's harder uh, to to binge isn't something that's emotionally rough. It's something that's a little bit more subtle and thoughtful in nature. I love that. It's not because I don't love that stuff. It's that sometimes after a couple of hours, I, I'm I realize that I'm behind the show. Like I'm in episode six and my brain is still kind of like chewing on episode three and I don't want to do that. I want to like fully chew. It's like, it's like, it's like something I really want to fully break it down and absorb it before I move on. Right. Cause if I just keep moving on, I'm g- it's all going to blur together. Uh, like serial experiments lane. 
I was just you know, going to bring that was one up. Was a show that like I like I tried to binge it because I thought it was interesting, but I realized I'm like I've watched like a bunch of episodes, but I've only comp- I've only started to comprehend and break down the first couple, and I was like, you know what? Let me just slow yeah. down. Yeah, it's. W- I was exactly yeah. thinking that show, and also I love. Um, I love the show about the thing. My mind is going completely blank. It's it's economics, the anime, and I'm totally blanking. Spice what and Wolf. Thank you, Spice and uh, Wolf. I could not think of it. It was something Wolf, something Sleepy Wolf, <laughs> Sleepy Wolf. wolf. What, what about Sugar Spice wolf. and Wolf though? So Spice and Wolf is. <laughs> I don't know about Sleepy Wolf. What the fuck about I feel like Sleepy Wolf. wolf. Um, it it is very intellectual. It is about. Like, literally, it's about economics. It's very well done, so it sounds boring. It's actually quite interesting. But I actually had to – I was binging it a little bit at work, and I actually had to stop what I was doing, go back and watch a scene two or three times to understand the underlying economics and why that was causing a problem Mm -hmm. for the two main characters. Mm -hmm. You can't binge it. You can't stare off into space, and it does take a lot to chew on, like a lot to think about and process. So it can be mentally exhausting trying to follow it. If you watch five episodes, like – I have no idea what's going on anymore because you need some you need some time to yeah. process it. So that's another one. Where I'm like, I love that show, but you do need to pay attention, and that can be emotionally exhausting if you watch. There's two, not two seasons, but two curse curse. Thank you, and uh, it's a lot of it's a lot of concentration that's needed. So I guess the conclusion I'm coming to here is rather than. It might be easier to binge a sad show because I did say like binging Attack on Titan and that can be kind of heavy, but um, heavy emotionally. But I think maybe it comes down to you can't really marathon something that's uh, emotionally draining or mentally draining or tough to analyze. I I like what we did when we had the watch party, which we'll get to in a little bit um, with Steins Gate is it forced me to like sit there and do two per week and I did get ahead after a while um, because I couldn't stop watching that show. But I think early on in Steins Gate, I did need the time to really sit and think about what was going on um, because there was so much to it. Yeah, Yeah. everything was deliberate too. There was nothing that was wasteful or useless in it. It's like from the very beginning, everything that happens, everything they say comes back around Mm -hmm. later on. You're like, oh, it's called back to that. Mm -hmm. So you have to pay attention. And like, I I just, you know, at the end of the day, it's not all good to me, in my opinion anyway, like all great art is better upon reflection, becomes better upon reflection. If if, Mm -hmm. if it becomes less interesting, the more you think about it, then it's. It's probably not going to stand the test of time, in my opinion. Mm. Um, so it's like in that sense, it's like it's not that you can't binge serial experiments land or something that's thoughtful, right? Uh, that's not what we're saying. But more specifically, that you'll probably get a lot more out of it if you don't. Exactly. And that you shouldn't ruin something. Not ruin, but you shouldn't compromise the experience of something like serial experiments lane yeah. um, or something comparable by rushing through it. You want like, to savor it. You want to savor it. Yep. Yeah. So let us know what – sad shows can you marathon and what was something that you needed a little more reflection on uh give us your recommendations uh in all the places that we've mentioned twitter facebook email and carrier pigeon carrier <laughs> pigeon um that brings us to the watch party which i mentioned Yay! the watch party is a segment we do every week where we watch two episodes of a show picked by you the audience uh this time we're watching gurren Logan. in previous watch parties have been cowboy bebop and steins gate to give you an idea of what kind of shows we do um, so if is it if I can't talk if this is your first time joining us for Watch Party this is a spoilery segment so if you haven't watched episodes 13 and 14 of Gurren Logan which is what we're discussing this week uh, I would recommend watching those first and coming back um, unfortunately Vince is looking at me right yes. now he has not watched Gurren Logan but he's gonna he's gonna I'm gonna power sit here through. I'm gonna see I'm gonna sit here and 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 look handsome <laughs> That's right. to the best of my ability and make nod wrestling a lot. Yep. make wrestling references mm-hmm, perhaps. Yeah. And also, it's sometimes really cool for the watch party. We do this with guests sometimes. If you haven't watched it, kind of getting your perspective based on what we're talking about, is this interesting? Oh, well, I'm not um, shy. I'll speak up if I have to. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, basically, because we've been on a little bit of a break to catch you up, we had the beach episode, which we talked about. Uh, that was 12. I really liked that as as a beach episode. Way yeah. better than uh, School Lives beach episode. I'm just saying. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, it wasn't wasteful. There was actually a point to it. Um, and we've seen the Team Digerin, um defeat three of the four uh, Supreme Generals or whatever they're called. Yeah. Uh, the Generals. So 
that brings us to 13 and 14. So I just want to start with the incredible Kevin S., who always posts a breakdown of Gurren Lagann in our Facebook group, which, again, is facebook.com slash groups slash IGN Anime Club. It says official group. Um, so Kevin is a really great member who provides these kind of in-depth uh, looks at the episodes we're watching. So Kevin says... The only thing really worth mentioning in episode 13 is how Gurren Lagann absorbed one of the mechs and now has the ability to fly. That's part one of the scenes you see. Uh, it's a uh, Shimon. <laughs> We've disagreed about whether it's Simon or Shimon. Yeah. I think it sounds dumb to say Shimon. <laughs> That's just me. <laughs> so Simon, whatever, and Yoko are in um, Gurren Lagann. And they do this like cool like monkey bar sort of thing with the, yeah. the grapples. And they're like taking things out of the sky. And it's awesome. Uh so that's important that Gurren Lagann can kind of, I mean, we know that the gunmen can absorb other gunmen and make a bigger one, but it was cool to see, like, it can fly and it can do this cool monkey bars thing. I yeah. liked it. Um, Kevin also says, also, the obvious reference to Mario at around seven minutes and 46 seconds in. I <laughs> like how precise that is. Uh, oh, where the very beast, precise. Where the beast men drop bombs that strongly resemble bullet bills. Um, these references really add to how zany and ridiculous the show is, as if it's fully coolly and if, as <laughs> if fully coolly and Evangelion had a baby. That is the I, I am absolutely going to go and start watching this show based on that <laughs> there, sentence. Right there, <laughs> fully coolly and Evangelion had a baby. Yes, please. They made Gurren Lagann. Uh, I also want to shout out the scene that Yoko and Simon share in the end. To me, that's extremely powerful. Um, Really rolling back a little bit, so Kevin in the past has highlighted different um, references that Gainax has made to other pieces of media in Gurren Lagann. So we have Western references, and this time it's a Mario reference. And it's just super cool to see those little e Easter eggs. Um, so thank you for, for that, Kevin. And yeah, Yoko and Simon just... She's she's kind of like, you know I liked you know I liked Kamina, right? And he's like, yeah, I know. And she's like, oh, okay. And it's just this really tender moment. It's it's these little moments. I don't really care for the action sequences, to be honest. I get a little mm. bored with them sometimes. Mm. But these little quiet moments that they're having more and more in the show, these are the kind of things that I like. It's that kind of quiet camaraderie, not all the silliness or the action. There's too many people like running around, <laughs> yelling at each other. And I'm like, what, what what is going on right now? But these quieter moments between Simon and Yoko, et cetera, et cetera, it just... That, to me, is the strength of the show mm -hmm. more than anything else. Yeah. I know it's all about action and over the top and hilarity, but to me, the things that matter are those moments where they take the time to connect with other characters. Well, even great action needs somewhere to go. Like, right. you know, like you can, there's so much, there's, there's such a thing as too much of, of a good anything, not just good action. You know, that's why pacing is so important. You mm -hmm. know, like, like the, like not anime, well, kind of not anime, ma the, the Matrix Reloaded or something is like 40 minutes of talking and 40 minutes of action. And like, <laughs> you know, um, but the, but having both is what, is what allows either to, to be you know, like that variance in tone is like, in, is important. Um, right. So yeah, n nothing it, wrong with look. Nothing wrong with appreciating tender moments in an action-oriented it, title. It keeps it from being one note. You right. don't yeah. want every ep if every episode was just like we beat another one or we didn't beat another one, then I'd be like, okay, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> done. But uh, it's the you know camaraderie in uh, Team Tiger and that I think really enriches the show. Um, I just want to highlight uh, before we get back to Kevin's breakdown. Uh, we have a tweet from Enki, again, using the hashtag IGNIME. Uh, I totally support Megan on her opinions of Tang and Tapu Gurren Lagann. Maybe it's late, but I'm still catching up to podcasts. I think, yeah, you still have similar opinions to what you've said I, in the past. I do. I were now 14 episodes in, and I keep hearing at the end it ties it all together. And we're starting to see, when we talk about episode 14, uh, there are some kind of references to like the Bible and the past of where they are, and it's starting to hint at where this is going. So it could still tie itself together and win my approval, but I just I'm not feeling it. And a little, mm. a little bit more and more, people are coming out and being like, "Yeah, I'm kind of with you. I like it. I don't love it. There's nothing wrong. It's so popular. So I mean, I'm, I'm in the minority, but it does make me feel a little bit better. I'm like, yeah, man, I'm just not feeling it." Yeah. I was like that in the beginning, and I'm I'm liking it more and more um, as we go along. Cause so I I don't know. Sometimes with action, I have to warm up to the characters before I care about the action. So in the beginning, sure. I was kind of I was waiting until I cared, and then I started to care more. Right. Uh, huh, my husbando. Your husbando. <laughs> um, the one person you cared about the most. The one person. I was <laughs> like, 
I, yeah. Um, not going to get into, into that now because I'll cry. Um, oh, no. So, <laughs> continuing on to episode 14, uh, which we touched on a little bit with. Um, so, he says, in the beginning of episode 14, Lord, Lord Genome is reciting the ancient holy scripture, which is literally the Bible of Christian doctrine. Again, Gurren is showing themes of religion tucked in by this example, and even that even the episode that introduces Rusio, so a lot of episodes back, uh, there's these kind of hints at, uh, this is me talking, not Kevin, by the way. Um, there's hints at, uh, you know, the religions of the past, religions that we're familiar with now, and kind right. of where their legacy has carried civilization. Um, going back to Kevin, he says, another deeper, deeper example I haven't mentioned is if we look at both the names Kamina and Simon, um, but I thought the Kamina one was particularly interesting because Kami, which I didn't even, it didn't even occur to me, mm-hmm. Kami is Kami. the word for God. Yep. God, yeah. Um, and that is pretty. And there's also, <laughs> yeah, there's also the mention about beast men and their origins, mm-hmm. which are hinted at, and something happened. We're starting to get the feeling that something major happened because mm-hmm. it sounds like humans were driven under the earth deliberately. Right. We just don't know quite why, and that they might be, it's hinted, have been the original villains. They did mm-hmm. something to destroy themselves. Mm-hmm. And now they've resurfaced. Who's the bad guy here? That's just, in addition to the tender moments, that's another thing I really like about this show is the steady pace of world building. I think it was a slow drip at first, and now we're getting pieces, and you can't really connect them all together yet, and I'm really enjoying that part of me being like, so some of the Beastmen look like people. What's up with that? Or uh, some of the Beastmen are straight up birds that talk. I don't <laughs> or know. Turtles or something. Like turtles or whatever. <laughs> um, I want to know what happened there. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, sound, you sound like the Chimera ants from Hunter x Hunter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I mean, the guy's name is Lord Genome. So you're like, yeah. hmm. And um, huh. Kevin okay. did point this out in a previous breakdown um, that all the four generals have names based on... Uh, Thionine, adenine, guanine, cytosine, huh. uh, which are the components of DNA. So, Lord Genome. Uh, uh, hey, um, yeah. So, there's something there with uh, genetics, obviously. And then uh, at the end of episode 13, he's talking to Viral. Yeah. Viral, it's spelled like viral. I don't know, man. Um, he's talking to him, like, you really want to know the, what he, who humans are? I want to tell you. And yeah. then the episode ends. Yeah, they, um, they, didn't, they never, they haven't yet shed light on it. That has not been addressed. Yeah. Um, but, he, you know, he's kind of talking about how, like, beastmen have to rest for, they have to, like, hibernate, basically, to heal their cells. cells. I'm like, whoa, this is cool, science. Yeah, um, yeah now things yeah. are, for me, are getting interesting, because mm-hmm. now we have a new layer, where before it's like, I don't get it. Why do I care? <laughs> and then they're like, there's, there's, there's more. It is a slow drip. I, I can't help but think the pacing hurts it for that, but it really might pay off in the next, what, 10 episodes or so? So I'm, I'm hoping. I'm hoping. Fingers crossed. Fingers um, crossed. The last thing I want to note is um, in episode 14, we hear the raw, raw, fight the power. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which I just love because it's so silly. It's raw, raw, fight, fight the, the power. power. <laughs> That did make me laugh. I, um, I was like, I what? I watched it on the train into work this morning, and I'm just like, like giggling at my phone in a good way. I'm not like one of those. I just I loved that. I, yeah. I I actually really do love the zaniness in this show, um, and I like the art style a lot. I'm enjoying it. Um, so if you haven't been watching Grand Lagoon along with us, and it sounds like something you want, kind of kind of like Vince is I'm like s- I'm fully signing cool, up. Yeah. Fully cool. Ava, Ava, I'm going Ava home and watching that right now. <laughs> yeah. So if it sounds like something you're interested in and you didn't care about spoilers, so you joined us for this segment, um, definitely pick it up. I I would recommend it so far um yeah i think that brings us to the end of our first episode of 2016 yay, yay! yay anime the next episodes i think will be previews of the upcoming seasons and wrap up of our best anime of 2015 so look out for that next week um we'll be doing kind of more of a comprehensive 2015 episode and what to look out for in 2016 yes um looking forward to it looking forward to that so where can they find you guys on twitter Megan, M-E-G-H-A-N underscore I-G-N. <laughs> I didn't do my dance. Ah, ah, I, I did cheer. It. I did oh, it for you. Yeah, she, you did it for me. <laughs> uh, you can find me uh, on Twitter at Vincognito. That's V-I-N-C-O-G-N-E-A-T-O. And uh, I'm usually tweeting stuff about criticizing pop culture in some way, shape, or form. <laughs> and that, 
I'm not criticizing, critiquing in some way, shape, or form, or talking Reviewer about extraordinary. Re- oh, please, yes. <laughs> or or talking about how rad uh, Nuclear Throne or some other game that I play that no one else plays. Uh, <laughs> I like is. that you represent the little guy. I, I like that I, a lot. I, I am little the little guy. guy. Yeah. But That's you have such a big, so cute. Pr- mighty yeah. presence. You do have. A, he, Vince has such a booming voice that I like could never think of him as the little guy. Um, <laughs> and I, believe, I believe indomitable was the yeah. word we <laughs> used. Indomitable, Vince. Tomato. Um, and you can find me on Twitter at Inky Dojiko. I N K Y D O J I K K O. If you're if you're it's, listening, we're dancing around the room right now. It's long and dumb, and Dojiko means klutz. <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next week. Yay anime! Yay, Yay anime! anime!